Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel today. So I'm back with another business analyst video because this video which talks about a glimpse of my life as a business analyst has become one of the most popular videos on my channel. So I'm very excited to share some of the tips and tricks on how to become a business analyst as it was one of the common questions that um, a lot of people asked. So I thought, you know what, why not share something that you guys want to learn more about? So I'm going to walk you through step by step on some of the some of the tips and tricks that I've used. Honestly, when I first filmed this video back in February, I had no idea who my target audience was. I had no idea who was gonna watch this video. So it was one of those fun, creative projects that I decided to embark on, but I am actually kind of shocked by how many views and comments and likes that I've received so far. Um, and I'm very grateful that you guys are supporting me on this uh, YouTube journey. So thank you so much for subscribing and liking my videos. Uh, this really helps me to understand what exactly, what kind of content you guys are interested in. So um, this is the reason why I decided to film another follow-up uh, video on business analysts and some of the tips on how to become one. So if you're interested in learning more, then just keep on watching. So as I mentioned in my previous video, business analysts are responsible for identifying the business needs of their customers, stakeholders, and to help determine effective solutions to satisfy business needs through requirements gathering, acting as a key facilitator, to bridge the gap between the customer, stakeholders, and other project team members. If you haven't watched this video already, click on this link to learn more. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about six specific actionable tips on how to become a business analyst. So let's first review the underlying competencies of BA. So as some of you already might know, business analyst needs to be analytical and they need to be problem solving oriented and it also requires them to often think outside the box or to be creative. So they have to have an ability to assess, understand a situation and provide solutions to those problems. In terms of the behavioral characteristic, an ability to foster and manage effective working relationships with different stakeholders is also important. So on another note, um, oftentimes business analysts need to have specific industry or business knowledge. So understanding of the industry, the business landscape and the environment, as well as some of the key milestones or events that have happened. Also, it is important for BA to have effective communication skills as oftentimes they have to act as a bridge between the customer and the vendors. And this includes having interaction skills and high emotional intelligence and EQ. And sometimes depending on what kind of BA you are, having software applications and tools would be part of your competencies to become a great BA. So let's look at business analysts and take a look at different types of job titles that are available out there. In my mind, business analysts can have, can either be focused more on the business side or they can be more system focused. So meaning they're more, a little bit more technical and it requires them to have certain ability to understand and utilize systems such as SAP, as an example. So if you take a look, we have so many different business analyst job titles that I've listed below. So this can include financial analysts, supply chain analysts, just business analysts. Um, it could be a data analyst, systems analyst, SAP technical analyst, or user support analyst. So as you can see, there are many different titles that a business analyst can have. And I've even put management consultant in here because I know that the type of jobs that they do, it's very, it's, it's providing solutions to business problems or some kind of um, issues that they're having. So 
Tip number one, research what kind of business analyst you want to be. So I want you to really dissect what kind of BA you want to be. It's great that you want to become a business analyst, but is there a specific industry you're interested in? Do you currently have any business knowledge or expertise in certain industries? What kind of systems or tools are you familiar with? Have you ever heard of PeopleSoft? Have you ever he heard of um, SAP? So these are some of the bigger players in the market. So have you heard of these different types of systems that you're familiar with? What kind of technical or business focus area are you interested in? So I want you to write down a list of five business areas and industries that you're interested in or have worked for in the past. So it's important to start brainstorming different ideas and write down a list of different industries and business areas that you're interested in focusing on. My job title actually inc includes systems analyst. So I'm a little bit more system focused, but my job also requires HR business knowledge as well. So you can say I'm 40% business focused and 60% system, system focused. If you think about it, unless you're a really small startup or small company, most companies have um, hundreds or even thousands of employees working in small to medium or even large companies and enterprises, right? So I wanted to really hone my human resources background and have some technical skill sets to find that niche. And that's the reason why I decided to become HR systems business analyst. Tip number two, so you should be looking and search for job postings and research different companies that are out there. So using keywords and depending on which areas and industry you're interested in, try to look for those job postings online. The more specific it is, the better it is. So um, some of the examples that I can provide is I knew that I was interested in becoming HR person, but I wanted a little bit more technical side of HR. So I researched by typing in HR business analyst, HR systems analyst. And when I searched those keywords into Google, um, I was able to get a whole list of different types of positions and job profiles and um, job postings out there. And based on what I found, I was able to go to LinkedIn and see if you can find somebody with the BA positions and at a specific company that you're interested in to apply for. So you can read their job descriptions and you can also Google different types of job descriptions and BA descriptions to find out more about the, their job responsibilities, some of the projects that they've worked on. So use those information to your, to your knowledge and use them to understand what kind of jobs, what kind of BA jobs are out there for you. Tip number three, and this is completely optional, but if you're a recent grad, I would highly recommend this path. So look for developmental rotation programs. So if you're a recent grad, try to look for big companies that provide developmental rotation programs. So some of these companies that I know that offer these types of programs include Accenture, Deloitte, any of the consulting companies, um, PwC and KPMG. So this is a very, very small list. Um, I'm sure there are so many other companies out there that provide excellent training. But the one of the reasons why I recommend this path is because they, first of all, provide great training. And oftentimes you get to work with the same grad class cohort and you build great relationships with your with your friends or, you know, with the with the people um, who are interested in becoming a BA and oftentimes it's just a great place to start and get your foot in the door. So this is a path that some of my friends have taken and they've had a huge success with it. So I would highly recommend this if this is something that you're interested in or if you're still in school and deciding which path you want to go but you're, if you're not sure then I would highly recommend you to 
look for those developmental or rotation programs. So make sure to go to job fairs, um, look for their internship internships and you know go to coffee go and ask for a coffee with some of the people who've already completed these programs at the companies that you're interested in working for tip number four try to compare your resume to what your future job posting so before i asked you to find and do some research on job postings that you're interested in applying for, right? So now you have to actually compare your current resume, what it looks like today, and then you have to compare it to your future job posting in order to identify the gaps. So when you look at the job postings that you're interested in applying for, uh, look for any specific designations like do they say CPHR or CPA preferred? Uh, what about PNG? So these are some of the designations that I can think of from the top of my head. Um, but look for those designations. Um, what about the education? What kind of education background are they looking for? Um, do they ask for a specific um, Excel skills? Um, are they listing effective communication skills, working directly with clients? So write down any gaps you can find uh, from your current resume and then see what are the areas that you need to improve on or work on for the next while. So for me, as an example, as a recent grad, even though I've completed co-op internships at a mining company within HR department and I've had some experience in labor relations as well as in training programs, I didn't have a whole lot of systems related technical skill sets that I really wanted to get exposure. So what I decided to do was I said, okay, so I really want to be more focused on systems. I want to work for, I want to work for a software company that can provide that kind of training for me in order to hone those technical skills. Tip number five. So try to map out your two, two to three year plan to develop those missing skills. So I think for me, it's completely okay if you don't land your next next dream BA job right away. It is more important for you to take the time to develop and master those skills. And in the long run, it'll be so much better for you to have those skill sets under, under your belt. You don't have to feel rushed or inadequate because this is all part of your learning and, and your growth. And just try to be more realistic because when I first graduated from university, I knew that I couldn't get into HR business analyst right away. Like I remember applying for so many different positions within the area and I kept on thinking, well, you know, like I would love to work in this area. This is my dream job, but why wouldn't anyone give me a chance? And I, I remember feeling so sad and upset um, when, whenever I got my rejection letter or when I, you know, didn't get the, the job that I really was hoping to get. But the lesson learned here is eventually I got there and right now I'm currently working as a business analyst and now I have different goals that have evolved. So just remember to really think be more realistic and think about what are the gaps and how I can improve my my chance of becoming a business analyst, right? So you don't have to feel rushed. Like I said before, I actually went and worked as an implementation consultant at a software company. And it's by far not the most glamorous job. I had to travel a lot and um, you know, it, w it was a very hard work, but it gave me such a strong foundation in terms of how interfaces work, how enterprise softwares work, the different sales cycles and different terminologies that people use and how to develop and foster relationships with um, developers and other technical people, that it gave a very strong foundation to my current role believe it or not. And this wouldn't have happened if I didn't take that three, two to three years to really hone in those skills and knowledge in software development. Tip number six, interview prep. So once you have the right skill sets and 
let's say hypothetically land an interview, remember to use very specific examples and explain, explain how they're relevant, even if you previously didn't have a business analyst title. So essentially, this is what happened to me as an implementation consultant, even though I didn't have a business analyst title, I was able to explain to my manager how I can utilize the skill sets that I've learned from my previous job, right? So help hiring managers to understand how you already have that knowledge and experience to jumpstart your career as a business analyst. And this is the key. You have to understand how to communicate what your role was and what kind of projects and initiatives that you've previously worked on and you need to translate how that how you can bring that knowledge and experience and then into your into your next business analyst role right because remember what i've said about being a great business analyst is that you have to be a very good effective communicator and uh, you have to act as a bridge between the business and and the vendor or, or oftentimes different software companies right so just think of it as like a practice round so when you're going through your interview make sure you can parse out different examples and really help the hiring managers understand that you are the right person because you have xyz under your belt as a final note, remember your career is a journey, it's not a destination. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to say this out loud, but really think about taking small steps and never lose sight of where you want to go, regardless of the industry, company, and what kind of position you're aiming for. And I like to think of it as building small blocks of certain skill sets to get to where you need to go. So finding your career and passion is obviously not a race. It, it's a marathon. We're all in it for a very long time until retirement. So I just wanted to leave that with you today. So let me know what you thought of the video, if you found it helpful. And if you have any other follow-up questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Okay, well, that's it for now then. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.